The title of this video is not clickbait. This BMW iX1 is absolutely better than Tesla, which is arguably the leader in autonomy and self-driving, all that sort of stuff, when it comes to self-parking. It's active cruise control and lane keep assist. I think Tesla Autopilot is pretty good, but not quite. So in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate those two things and yeah, why if you've been thinking Tesla is the only one, mm, think again. Before I get into a demonstration of its self-parking, know that I've already shot some B-roll footage, which you're seeing right now. So I've only got two cameras and well, I've recorded other stuff on those same two cameras. So it might look like I'm trying to mix up and mash together to make it look good, but I'm not. It's actually basically not one, not two, but maybe four or half a dozen demonstrations of the same thing. So yeah, th this is the primary camera work I'm doing today. So <laughs> hope you understand what I'm trying to say there. And um, yeah, let's get into it because uh, this uh, really is that good. So we're in a car park and I'm gonna press this button down here to activate uh, the parking uh, system. And what it's gonna do, I can go up to 35 k's per hour and when it finds one, it's gonna show up on screen. So um, let me just go over here where the sunlight's a bit kinder to the cameras. All right, if I press park reverse now, I'm kind of interested as to where it's gonna go. So it's pointing to between those two cars. All I need to do now is actually take my foot off the brake and as you saw, it was already indicating. And now it's taking over the, um, you know, the actual accelerator, the brake and the steering wheel. And it's using augmented reality to actually understand where the, it's gonna park itself, where in relation it is to other things. And it's gonna go backwards and forwards like it is right now, steering, making all the corrections it needs to, and then going backwards. Now, have you noticed how fast this is actually going and how quickly and efficiently it's doing it? Uh, my experience in Tesla with the same thing, in fact, any other car for that matter, it's finished, it's done. My experience with all of the cars to date that I've tested, and I've been fortunate to test a lot of them, this one literally <laughs> all over those other ones. I kid you not. Um, so that was not a fluke. It does it consistently and really, really well. It parks better than I can and just as fast as I can. So, okay, now that we've done that one, let's go find uh, a parallel spot, yeah? So it's constantly looking for parking spaces. And again, I can go up to 35 k's per hour. Uh, oh, awesome, this is good. I saw this spot before and it's a challenging one because it's tight. Uh, so I want to park in a parallel, okay? So it's going to measure it and it will tell me if it's gonna be able to do it. Let's slow down, because I hope it does. All right, cool. So it says start reverse parking, and I'm gonna tap that, and put off the brake. Just looking around at my surroundings, because you know, these are still actually, uh, can actually have fault. And uh, it's a bit nerve wracking trusting a car to do this for you. And I am guarding that brake with all my might, because it's not my car. But, mate, there was one. Two, and it thinks it's okay. And to be fair, look, there is a line at the front, which is reasonable. And if I go to the uh, back of the car, so I'll go to the 3D view. Let's go to the back and see what's what. Oh yeah, I've got plenty of space back there. Now, if that was me, I would actually try to even up between these two cars because, well, obviously this big Jeep in front of me has uh, very unkindly parked way too close to this bay. And um, I can be a good citizen and kind of correct that by going closer, well, dividing between the two cars. But yeah, excellent, right? And that was so fast. I, I didn't have a timer on right then, but I'll do it in post and you can see what it means. Now you can see there's actually a lead the parking space feature. So what it's gonna do now, it's gonna do all the preparation to get it so that I can actually just take this car out. So it's gonna do a quick little reverse, get the nose out a wee bit, and it's gonna turn the wheel, it's already indicated and it's saying, yep, you can take over now. So let this car go. And there we go. Okay, so start, put off the brake. There it goes. You can see the green lights on the wheel. And again, it's like showing it where it's going to park. Put the pole there. My 
much this this is so cool I don't know how it's so good at that. Mm. I, 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 it's amazing. Uh, in one of my videos comparing, let's say, Kia EV6 or the Ionic 6 or I a Kia um, Ionic 5, I've tested lots of cars when they're self-parking. Um, they're all like a learner driver. They're really shocking. <laughs> and they're slow, they're, they're very slow, like, you know, 60 seconds, 90, one, th one was even three minutes, so that was a Kia EV6. And um, you, you wouldn't want to do it because you'd be holding everybody up and it's just embarrassing. This, on the other hand, it just mimics so well that parking that an experienced driver does. And um, yeah, I've actually been finding, I've been using it because it's that good. All right, let's wait for the traffic to clear now and we'll do a, a demonstration of its lane centering and uh, lane keep assist and you know uh, active cruise control uh, because yeah it's actually very good um, not Tesla good but pretty close pretty close and uh, I'd like to um, talk about some of the features that I think some people just aren't aware are actually out there and that is like automatic lane change which this car does. So we're driving along here, we're doing 66 in a 70k per hour zone. I'm going to enable the active cruise control now and just by pressing uh, set it's already turned itself on and it's going to accelerate up to the speed limit in the area and I really love that feature like that that's the same in Tesla's too. Um, unfortunately if the speed sign does change around here it's not going to um, match the speed of the area say for uh, on ramps or off ramps or yeah just even a speed change in the area uh, but it will recognize the fact that okay right now is in a 70 zone so when I re-enable um, active cruise control it will accelerate back up to that without me needing to actually dial it up say so all right I'm on I've set it to 70 well I've asked it to go to 70 and uh, it's slowly going up there. Well, it's actually limited by that car in front of me. Uh, come on, mate. We've got to go to 100. It's 100 up ahead, please. Don't you love it when people are really good at merging? You know what I mean? By really good? No, they're not very good. Anyway, all right, let's go, let's go. Hey, we're off. All right, so now it knows it could be 100. So I just press set and it actually will then go to 100 k's per hour if um, the car can actually get that speed but we're kind of at the end of peak hour here right now in Melbourne so it's not we're not going to get to 100 on this drive I reckon but even so it's good so I just press again the set button and it will try to get to 100 so unlike other cars it requires you to manually go up 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 or down 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 to match that speed limit now it's more like the Tesla experience, you know how you can just tap on the screen um, where the speedometer is, like the speed limit of the area is, and it will go to that speed. So very nice, very good. Okay, I've got this car set to close, and um, in other cars uh, that might mean a certain number of distance, a distance rather, between you yourself and the car in front, or, or like a timing thing. Uh, and I think this car is definitely a more along the latter in that you can either set it to like close, medium or far and it's speed dependent. So it's going to actually leave an adequate space uh, based upon you know the speed you're doing. So the faster you go, the further that gap's gonna be. And I actually prefer that system because other ones, you know, they always like to be way too close to my liking. And uh, um, thanks to uh, Alex for pointing that out to me because I was driving along and the gap was too big and you know you get cut off all that usual stuff that happens anyway coming up on a well good mm, 45 50 degree curve um, I'm doing 100 k's per hour and again I'm going to be touching the wheel but not actually um, you know actively controlling it so we'll let the car do the corner itself uh, staying nice and centered it's not ping-ponging around the lane Distance is safe and adequate. We've got a car to our left that's going to um, take the left-hand lane now. And here's that more challenging curve. And other cars with lesser systems would have struggled with that, definitely. Tesla, they would have done that in a stench. So, let's now do an automatic lane change. And to do this, all you do is you 
indicate to the left, like right now I'm going to be the left hand lane. It's going to uh, check to see if it's clear and it's changed lanes and it's done. That's it, quite simple. Got a truck ahead, so all I do now is I indicate right. It's going to check, or well, I'm checking, but the car's also checking, changes lanes and complete. And you notice the indicator will actually um, turn on and off by itself and it will wait till it actually does the lane change and completes it, then it will actually um, uh, turn the indicator off. Uh, again, I think this is actually using uh, vision just like Tesla does and yeah, it's great. It, it actually does it really, really well. All right, I'm going to exit up ahead because I want to go to a really challenging curve which I think uh, this car won't be able to do and then we'll try one that's maybe, maybe not possible. I haven't tried it yet so I'll be interested to see if this car does that. So hang around. Okay, I'm coming up on the Digger's Rest uh, Buller Bypass Road. The bottom of this is a spectacular old bridge um, and it's got like a really sharp hairpin turn. To be fair, I reckon even my Tesla might struggle with this one. Uh, in the future with full self-driving beta, maybe uh, Tesla, well I reckon they, they can definitely do this. Um, but we'll see what happens, eh? Now uh, I'm going to turn this back on. Uh, I don't want that speed. <laughs> I want it at 40. There we go, 40. So you can set it. I don't want that speed. No. Nah. Hear that? It did the, I don't think so. So let's set, set it. All right, here we go. Let's see if it's going to re-enable. Um, looking at the steering wheel icon to see in my head-up display that it's actually on and active but it's not so that yeah <laughs> it's not gonna happen folks all right we'll try uh, another challenging um, uh, curve for it and that's from the Tullamarine freeway onto the western freeway there's a lovely spectacular um, overpass uh, you'll see it and uh, we'll see if we can do that so we're coming up we're doing currently 100 k's per hour because I can there's a speed limit here. Uh, this exit ramp and interchange is 80 k's per hour, so I'll do that speed limit. Uh, in my Tesla, on a good day, it can do this. Uh, sometimes, I don't know why though, it doesn't always. So, I think, to be fair to Beamer here, um, if, this doesn't, if this doesn't work, that's still a pass in my book because, um, yeah, I think next to the Polestar uh, and Volvo, which I feel have got very similar smarts under the skin, you know, under the hood. This is, uh, yeah, right up there. Anyway, here we go. It's changing. And, yeah. See that? I, that was not me changing that lane. That was a car. Okay. All right. Fast forward now to the interchange. Uh, I think my 360 is full <laughs> with this memory card. Uh, dearie me, so I've changed my camera just so you can see what I'm doing here. Again, I'm touching the wheel, I'm ready to take over, but I'm going to let the car actually do it, okay? So here we go, we're doing 80, following, it's turning the wheel, that's good. It's the easier bit, now comes the hard bit, we're doing that 90 degree turn to the right. This is where it's going to either go really badly, very fast, uh, oh, blame it, it's doing it, it's doing it. Oh, get out of town. Okay, all right. Well done. Well done, BMW. Um, okay. We, we have a new, <laughs> a new queen or king to the Tesla when it comes to autopilot lane change and definitely the real victor when it comes to self-parking this this car is impressive i i am i am shook and i guess look you know i'm really fortunate to be able to um, spend time with these cars and they're great cars and oops wrong button <laughs> um, and i think sometimes there are people out there who don't actually understand what's available in the market right now and they think that uh, Tesla is the be all and end all and the best and um, nothing comes close. But you know what? I, I hope this video has actually demonstrated that no, that they're, they're, they're not necessarily the best parking. Um, they are still very good. 
and, and it's still my benchmark when it comes to autopilot. Uh, this one has, uh, with its active cruise control system, it's got little sensors here that's watching my eyes. And so in stop-start traffic, you know, when the car comes to a complete stop and in other car systems where it would actually, let's say, after three seconds, you'll need to prompt the car. That is to say, you've got to press the accelerator or do something with the cruise control button to say, yeah, resume my journey and keep driving for me, right? This car, if you're paying attention out in this direction, it will actually keep doing that stop, start and traffic, traffic for you, uh, much like a Tesla. It's great. Uh, but uh, I don't understand why they don't use, utilize that feature more when it comes to actually just driving, like what? why can't I just have less nag factor come through the wheel, like those reminders, you know, um, every uh, 15 seconds or 13 second, or 30 seconds. Um, why doesn't it just use the sensors here to make sure that I'm paying attention and bring me the nag factor to say, hey, are you there? Are you ready to take over any time? Um, because, you know, they've got the ability in this car to do that. And, uh, it's, it's very good. Uh, it makes for effortless driving and if you've got that long freeway highway journey and you're going to go to um, interstate or a few hours of basic boring driving, uh, this car, I love to do it in this car. This car is very comfortable and um, look, watch out for that full review. Uh, I'll leave a card up here for it, it'll be in the description below. And uh, if you have enjoyed this content, please give me a sub. It really would be appreciated. Uh, share this video, comment, like it, all that jazz. Everything that you do um, around that helps uh, YouTube to say, hey, this video actually probably should, should be seen by more people. And uh, that would be really, really appreciated. And if you know me, I love coffee. <laughs> and if you want to leave me a coffee tip, link to that is below. Supporting the channel in all those different ways is, very, is really appreciated. Okay, so that said, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you soon.